So uh, like documentation, the, the release cycle management is what we call an horizontal project in OpenStack. That means it serves the needs of all the other OpenStack projects. And, and so the, our, our main challenge, like Anne mentioned, is to uh, accompany the constant growth of, of the OpenStack project and reinvent ways of doing what we do at, uh, at the scale of, of uh, software development that we see uh, inside, inside OpenStack. Um, so my uh, own program is called Release Cycle Management, and it's it's really about all the all the coordination around releases, around uh, organizing the development, and and making sure that the, whatever we produce is consumable, uh, consumable downstream. We have uh, three different sub teams on the next slide. So we have uh, integrated release management. That's what the the current release cycle is about. So we make sure that all the all the different pieces of the integrated release are uh, on track and communicate what they are working on so that we can predict what will be in the next release and hit the deadlines on time and release on time on the same date we uh, announce at the beginning of the cycle. We have stable branch maintenance that goes after the release. Uh, that's about backporting important bug fixes, backporting security issues, uh, security bug fixes. Uh, and and then issue point releases uh, for for uh, for our downstream consumers to to use. And finally, we have a team uh, working on vulnerability management, uh, receiving uh, vulnerability reports from from various actors on the internet, and and following up on them and making sure that we address the the vulnerabilities that are reported in OpenStack software in. Uh, uh, as, as fast as we can, and, and uh, with the best uh, disclosure mechanism as we as we can organize. Um, so we'll start with what we achieved in uh, during the Juno cycle. So uh, during the Juno cycle, we we hit uh, our, all our deadlines again. Um, so we released on, on on the date we we announced we would release. We um, evolved the. Uh, make the process for, for uh, publishing all the development milestones. We have three development milestones in the middle of the cycle, and we used to have uh, uh, more of a branch uh, for, for a few days and let it cool off. And we replaced that by a more lightweight system where we just tag when, when the, the project technically is happy with the current state of the branch. We just apply the tag and, and move forward. Um, so we simplified the, that development milestone publication process. Um, on the stable branch side, we, uh, we extended IceHouse support for uh, 15 months. So we will be supporting IceHouse for, uh, for a 15 months period. And on the vulnerability management team front, we addressed 90 vulnerability reports and issued 24 security advisories out of those 90 reports. Some of them were not uh, really vulnerabilities. Some others were not considered uh, significant or exploitable enough for, uh, for justifying an advisory, but we released 24 advisories during the last cycle. And finally, we created a taxonomy for incident reports, which means now we, when we receive a report, we classify it, and there is a, a, a given process to apply for each type of incident reports in that taxonomy. So we have a much more uh, transparent process in the way we uh, handle those uh, those reports. For the kilo cycle, uh, first uh, we'll stop with stable branch because that's where most of the changes will uh, will be coming. Um, so stable branches started to hit a scalability issue with the number of projects that we added to to OpenStack. So uh, the reviews were really slow. It was a very small team uh, driving the driving the stable branches for all the projects. And we decided to uh, decentralize this structure. Um, so now we have a stable liaison named in every project that has a stable branch. So we have a designated person that lives in the upstream project that uh, works in collaboration with the stable um, branch maintenance team. We have per project stable maintenance teams. So um, around the stable liaison, we have a number of people that 
will directly approve the backport to the stable branch. And that's a, a strong departure from the current system where it's a single team that was reviewing all the, all the patches for all the projects, and now we're decentralizing this, uh, this organization so that we have project-specific maintenance teams that are more, uh, more in the domain expertise, but um, we still have the stable branch maintenance team looking over them to, uh, making sure that, to make sure that they, have, uh, they follow the stable branch rules, the, the, the rules that we, we, that we created for the stable branch. We will have what we call stable champions. Um, those are people that are responsible for a branch in particular uh, and making sure that that branch is still usable from a continuous integration perspective. Because um, uh, from time to time, the stable branch is not exercised as much as the master branch, so it can go stale really, really fast. And when we need it, like when we need to, um, to merge a security fix, uh, we kind of need it to be working uh, on the right uh, date. And the stable champion will watch the branch and make sure that we can land patches in that branch all the time. We'll have uh, stable release managers. We already had them, but uh, we will more formalize how they're uh, intervening in the, in the structure. So stable release managers are people that are responsible for point releases. So they uh, bang the drum every, every month or every two months for for uh, issuing a specific point release in one of the stable branches, and they make sure that uh, all the important bug fixes are backported in time. And finally, we'll have, in addition to the per project stable maintenance team, we'll have a stable core team that is responsible for uh, answering the, 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 the respect of the stable policy. So we have a stable policy that says only high impact bugs that uh, are uh, obviously uh, backward compatible and will have will not result in behavior changes for users of the stable branch. So we have a very conservative stable branch policy, and the stable core team is responsible for making sure that this continues to be uh, respected with this more decentralized structure. So that's it for a stable branch. Um, oh no, we have more. <laughs> Uh, we also will also try to introduce dependency capping in the um, in the stable branch. So currently, we support new dependencies coming in the in the stable branch, and and this is the main reason why the stable branch breaks from time to time because there is a, a non backward compatible dependency that gets uh, pulled from the rest of our ecosystem. And so we are looking into ways to cap those dependencies to make sure that we don't get continuously broken by upgrading our dependencies. And finally, we will work on opening the team uh, because the, the team was operating on a separate mailing list. And, and so it was really difficult for people outside the team to see the work that the stable branch team was doing. And so we moved all our discussions to the development mailing list, and we abandoned our specific mailing list to make sure that our work was visible so that we can recruit new people that would be interested in joining the stable branch team. Uh, next slide, please. So release management. Uh, we will have feature freeze on the kilo cycle on March 19. Um, that means that will probably be the peak of, of feature landing and gate activity within OpenStack. So uh, don't go in vacation around that day. Um, for the final release, it's planned for April 30, so at the very end of the month of April, and we'll have our uh, our next L uh, design summit in Vancouver in May. Um, the, the challenge for the release management team is to handle one more project. Uh, we have Hironic that was. Uh, integrated during the, at the end of the last cycle, so we need to support it, and it will be the first release of Ironic in uh, an OpenStack integrated release. We'll also do um, a number of changes in the release management processes. We'll switch to release liaison sync points. Um, we we used to have PTLs coming every Tuesday to, on uh, on an RC channel to synchronize with release management and will more formally allow them to delegate to uh, specific people within their team called the release, uh, release liaison. 
um, we will then uh, change, we we'll actually already did change the release meeting that is every Tuesday at uh, 21 UTC to become a true cross-project meeting. Is every, any, any issue that is truly cross-project within OpenStack can be raised to that meeting to be discussed in, a, in an open forum, not just release management issues. Uh, so that's a, that's a nice uh, improvement. We'll continue to evolve the Design Summit format um, to make sure that we can uh, sustain more projects within, within, uh, within the OpenStack community and to be discussed in the Design Summit. And finally, we'll uh, also evolve tooling to support new practices. Um, so lots of projects, for example, have started to use spec for, uh, for uh, pre-approved design before implementation in, in, uh, in OpenStack projects. And we need to make sure that the spec process is as integrated as possible with the rest of our task tracking tools, uh, Launchpad and the upcoming storyboard tool. On the vulnerability management front, we'll, uh, do f we'll finish to uh, publish the security advisories on a specific website. Uh, currently, the security advisories are only published on a mailing list, an announced mailing list. And we, we now have a, a repository for all the security advisories, and we'll publish those uh, directly on the security website uh, on OpenStack.org. Um, that will be more uh, official than the copies that we would find on the wiki currently. And we plan to adopt a new uh, vulnerability metric based on the DREAD framework. So we'll be able to uh, have a scale for, uh, to rate the importance of every vulnerability. Artists will try to, uh, to provide a score that will be uh, helpful for people to determine how fast they need to react to, uh, to a given vulnerability. And I think that's it. Yes, thanks you for, for um, listening. And if you have any questions, you can reach, reach out to me on IRC, on Twitter, on, uh, or via email, any question on release cycle management.